Leila Josephine, live on You Call That Radio TV. Brothers and sisters, may the peace that can only come from the one God be upon you. We are here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow us as people of conscience to lose our morale. by our patrons. Uh, as you call that radio t- Oh! <laughs> as you call that radio TV with a very special bonus show. You didn't know this was going to happen. I, I didn't even know it was going to happen. But we're having a super secret bonus Extra surprise live show this afternoon with the poet, actor, writer, and now BAFTA nominee, Leila Josephine, who's currently on a UK tour and has a new book. And is actually playing this Saturday in Glasgow, a rival gig at the same time as the Gyro Babies and Esperanza and all that stuff as well. And also, I know there's a few years in Gala Shields. Leila will be in Gala Shields tonight as well. So, yes, just give us a second to get Leila on the show. I hope everyone's well. Is it, we, and you can hear me all right? You can hear me all right? Mike is in the house. Hello, Mike. Mike, check, Mike, check. Sorry, I was recording earlier, so I'm just making sure you can hear me all right. What I'm going to do is just give you, play something from Josephine, just to get you in the mood. Probably the best poet in the country at the moment. Has been for years. And done various different things. It's was, it was been a while since we had him on the show. I think probably the last time Leila was on the show was maybe being one of the judges at the, you call that radio, Poet of the Year Slam. So it's, that, that was a while ago. That must have been, I think that was, that was 2020 maybe. So a lot of stuff has happened since then. Uh, Lily said a few, a couple of fringe shows since then, and was literally just at the BAFTAs there as well. So let's um, let's go for a wee clip fr- from Lila's London show, and then we'll bring her on, and we can have a wee live and interactive chat. Good afternoon, Mark. Oh, in fact, she's here. I think she might be here already. We'll maybe say hello first. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I'm good, sorry I'm late. How you doing? I'm late as well. I'm late as well. I just decided to start it because I think after 10 minutes they, you get any trouble from... I just said my phone's gone as well. It's, it's just why we're doing the afternoon shows really because it, it seems like everyone annoys you. They're busy. People have too many emails going on in the afternoon but I couldn't do it tonight because I'm in Gala Shields so that's why we landed Gala Shields is, Gala Shields is great. My cards. That love a my cart show. Be good amazing. one. You've been before? Yeah, I was there when I was uh, with John Cooper Clark. So that's the only time I've been, but it was a pretty good gig. First leg John of the John Cooper Clark, that is amazing. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Mark? I haven't spoke to you in a really long time. I'm all right, I'm all right. I was, I was just, I woke up the day and I decided, I was like, I felt a bit stressed out. Yeah. I just decided I chose not to be stressed out. Nice. So, that's a good attitude. I could go either way, I could go either way. But I'm all right. I'm right. What do you do? What do you do to like make that decision? Do you like meditate, or do you just go not today? Or cod liver oil. Cod liver oil. You think that's it's... the key to not being stressed? Yeah, no, I think it's just the key to happiness. If you just you look at it, you've got to take it right. Or you want to look at a cod liver oil and go, this is like an ecky, and it's going to make me feel happy, satisfied, I'm going to take one. I'm sharp. Going to take one. No. It's going I'm to be sharp, and then you just take it. But yeah, I would recommend a cod liver oil a day, and I'm going to just put on. I've got I've got lined up here. Oh yeah, you go right. Okay, yeah. So just just <laughs> like got, to, got, got to be mindful about it and just go. Okay. This is the key to happiness. 
the... And also make, make a wish. Make a wish like his <laughs> birthday. Like his birthday candles. Okay, right. Like, hold on. Let me just, like, tune in. This is an echo. And I hope it's not long before you have another one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you give it a couple of minutes. Let it like an immigrant. An immigrant, like an imagination. An imaginary like, echo. Which, like a placebo, uh, yeah. See, I take a quite a few different ones, but I had my cod liver oil right there, so I was like ready for that's it. it. You'll be sharp. You'll be sharp for the gig tonight. It's yes. uh, it's brain food, apparently. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I do think um, getting those fish oils, but you can just have fish as well, right? You can have fish. I you're allowed fish these days as well. <laughs> just, um, there's no rules against that. What which um, what, what other what supplements? Since we're we're um, on the supplements, what what supplements should one? I, I've been I've been getting into magnesiums to not. Oh yeah. Out. But so I think I can... that's a that's a nighttime thing because, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to operate heavy machinery on the magnesium because. Oh really? Does it knock you out? So they say. I don't know. So I take. A B12, a vitamin D, a vitamin C, cod liver oil, and a zinc. That's my So how did you know your cod liver oil this morning? Did you just forget? They're actually lying out. I did forget, yeah. Um, oh, but I, I try loads of different things. Like I was on mushroom tea for a while, but I don't think it was doing much. And then I've, I've had them all. I've had them all, but, um, yeah, I don't. it's quite hard to tell if they actually work or not. I just take them in faith, I think, more than anything else. Well, that's it. You've got to believe they work. So it's like, just use the placebo, just go, this is working. This is working for me. But I might as well got, eat carbs. Have you got headphones? Have you got headphones? I'm just hearing a wee bit of an echo. Uh, yeah, they're in my car. Do you want me to go get them? No, we'll, no hold on a second then. We'll play a, we'll play something. We'll play a, a video of yours where you give your time to go get it. Okay. Hold on, we got uh, Ali Grant's passing through. Hi, Ali. Thanks for passing through. <laughs> and I missed a name drop. John Cooper Clark, I did miss a name drop. Who did you play? Who did you play? Uh, Mac Artsmith? Don Cooper Clark. <laughs> the name drop. You call that radio. And John Cooper Clark's been name dropped. Myself, I've got my name dropped. I, I name dropped John Cooper Clark. Here, here is John Cooper, a very quick interview I did with John Cooper Clark. Right, right. Dr. John Cooper Clark, do you call that radio? That was it. That was it. Wow. That was all I got. Although I'm a wee bit gutted that, because I was, I, I went on after him at Eden Festival, and I probably told you that before. If you told no, me that I don't. Before. Know. I've not heard that story. Yeah, I went on at Eden Festival after. So I was like um, told the guy was booking me. Went when do you want to play? And I went well, as close to John Cooper Clark as you can get. So in my head, I was imagining on just before John Cooper Clark, the place is busy, and I'm just warming them up. But sadly, I was on straight after John Cooper Clark and at Rabbi's Tavern in Eden. It was probably the worst spoken word gig I've, I've played. Oh, really? Was it quiet? No, no, it was no, no, the opposite of quiet. It was a rowdy pub. I couldn't control the audience. Yeah. Because, you know, John Cooper Clark's one of those people that he's so famous, he's, you know, he's not stuck in the poetry box or anything like that. Yeah. So it's not poetry fans that go to it. No. So shut up and listen to John Cooper Clark, but a lot of them are drinking and talking during him as well, because it's a festival, they've just know of the legend. So they, they kind of maybe behaved, they did behave themselves for John Cooper Clark, because he is so good, you know what I mean? And I wasn't at my best either, I was kind of a bit rough the night before. Yeah, and, yeah. I just watched, and I just watched a proper professional, and you know, I, I can dive in and out of spoken word, I'm not the best, but if I do it more than, if I do six, if I do it six times in two months, I get good. But if I'm about out of practice, I'm I'm terrible. I go back to square yeah. one again. You got so, practice for sure. Did you feel you, you went away for a while? Because you, you obviously you, you had um, uh, sorry, da Daddy Drag. So I did Daddy Drag in 2019. Yeah. Um, and then um, I don't I don't think I really went away for a while. I think I was it was just kind of COVID. Um, and... yeah, there was a bit of a bug going about. So it, a wee bug. And, it and it hindered some of the live yeah. events. But I had to, I had to, you know, it was the perfect time to say like, okay, right now it's time for the book. So I feel like I take, I kind of go through these like ebbs and flows, like of a, like, like a really busy time and then like a really quiet time. So during, after kind of John Cooper Clark and Daddy Drag, I did like, um, I did, uh, I did uh, my live album, Archive Live. 
and then I started developing in film and writing the book so I was kind of doing everything behind the scenes and now the last few months have been like everything being launched so I'm very much like in the public realm whereas you know though you're an artist all the time it's just sometimes that you're really like yeah sorry I, I, yeah I'm rephrasing I don't mean that you went away mm. I, I mean like just from a I hadn't seen you perform a spoken word for a while because, the buzz. obviously the there buzz. was that bug gone about events were cancelled and stuff but also there's not as much as there used to be like when me and you were like first gigging together there was like you know three or four nights a week and now it just feels like there's not really as much opportunity anymore and if there is it's the cool young kids that are, get, are getting invited maybe. Are, are they cool are they cool i'm out, I'm out the loop is there cool i don't know kids? i've never met them i'm not invited but um it's you know it goes through phases like i'm sure there'll be other nights popping up soon as well um but yeah it does feel quieter after covid than it did beforehand especially in I didn't struggle when I was booking my tour. I, I got, I've got most of my gigs are in England, whereas a lot of places in Scot, like there's not that many places to go in Scotland, and not that many places in Scotland that like have the money to have you either. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been quite like sad, really, that most of the tour is in, in England. It's a big tour. Yeah, last week well, was crazy. I'm gonna try and find the. I'm gonna get your tour poster up. I can tell yeah. you. I can remember. Was, off the top. Okay, so yeah. where, where, did it, where did it all begin? So I started in Bristol and then I went to Cheltenham for the the literary festival there and I shouted cunt on stage, which was really fun because they were all really posh. And then I went to um, Leeds and Sheffield and then I went to Liverpool, Newcastle, London, Southampton. I did a show in Edinburgh that pushed the boat out and another one in Edinburgh with Janet, but that wasn't really it. Uh, Janet? Jeanette. That was so funny. She was getting called Janet all night that night, and then I've just done it again. Uh, with Jeanette uh, at Edinburgh Park um, for something else. And then, yeah, then Glasgow at the weekend and Gala Shields tonight. And I've got Mull, Lismore, Wexford, Dublin, Belfast to go. So, lots going on. Very exciting. Tired, though. Knackered. Yeah. I, I think it's been... I found gigging to be really tiring i know it sounds more tiring than it used to be i don't know is this is this a, just losing the practice yeah i think we're also getting old but i also think that like my social skills have changed since covid like i used to go and i used to like drink a lot during the gigs just to get through them and after them but actually now i can't deal with the hangover and the fear because I, when i've got when i've done a gig where I've really exposed myself I'll have the fear about that and the fear from the hangover so I just can't do it anymore so I think I don't have the the numbing that I used to have so it's like more intense um but I I mean it's it's been amazing like to be out and about again like I felt like 2019 I was like just getting better and better and better as you said like practicing and then you know then there was COVID and I just felt so out of practice didn't want to do it anymore and now again, I'm just like kind of creeping up, practicing, getting better, um, spending more time with the poems, and you know, learning them better. And it's like it's really cool. And I love, I love my favorite audience are the audience that I don't know because I get to like kind of win them over. Whereas Glasgow on Saturday is going to be a really hard one because I'll know half the audience. Uh, but yeah, like I love going to like for example in Leeds, like there was only like twelve people there. And none of them had heard me before. And I had this opportunity just to, like, win them all over. And that is really fun because um, they don't know what to expect. But then, you know, you know, you're, I don't know. Do you find your home gigs the hardest? Like, I find them because you've got a big gig on Saturday as well, obviously. Rival gig. Yeah. Rival, rival gig. gig. <laughs> I think we've got different audiences. So I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think, you're, I mean, it's mostly, it's, it's Esperanza's album launch. So we're just kind of support. It's not our big one. It's, it's Esperanza's big day. So it's gonna be more. Do you want to go? Do you want to see ska and dance about ska, or do you want to see, um, hear hear the words of poetry? In fact, we'll go into. It's not just poetry, of course. I know there's impress. In fact, you can tell us who else is playing. But you're a boy. If you're going to either gig, you can come to this anyway. Um, Joe Jive, the Wise Goldfish, and Kenny Mulligan are doing a classics only, a classic grand set. So if you've got a Joseph, if you've got a um, ticket for Leila Josephine, you can get a free guest date into that. So Ooh. we're on at eight, and then I think Esperan Big Fat Panda Esperanza, and then we've got 11 to three. So welcome to join us. 
And what about your gig? Who else is playing? Okay, let me try. Remember, so it's hosted by Colin Bramwell. We've got Ellen Renton, Iona Lee, um, Empress, Kevin P. Gilday, um, and we're, we've got the Push It uh, DJ, Nikki Rush, playing as well. Is that everyone? I think that's everyone. Yeah, Iona Lee. Did I say Iona? Yes, I don't know. She's worth seeing twice. She's worth seeing twice. Yeah, and then I've got some secret musical guests as well that are coming to accompany me as well. Secret during musical the show. guests? So what's this? So so you went away. You did Daddy Drag. So that was why I was saying you didn't do a spoken word because you came back and did like a theatre show, which was oh, great. Yeah. I seen the show. That, so it was it felt like rather than you coming back on to poetry, you did the Daddy Drag first, mm -hmm. and then what is the BAFTA thing? So I made a short film in two thousand and uh, twenty twenty one called Groom. Um, and it's a short film about a young girl that goes to work in a nail salon. It's like completely narrative, um, so really different from me uh, for me. Um, and yeah, it's been like doing festivals. It's been doing really well, and it got nominated for a BAFTA the weekend. So Scottish BAFTA, which somebody uh, highlighted as called the Scafters. So <laughs> they people can f honestly, man. You're, you're, uh, oh, it's not actually a BAFTA. It's a Scottish BAFTA. It's a BAFTA. I know, it's a BAFTA. Do you know, uh, Darren won one at the weekend as well. Yeah, exactly. Darren won a BAFTA, not a Scottish BAFTA. Yeah, he's a legend. Um, he's, he's just smashing it just now, as always. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was hoping that I would get nominated for a BAFTA. But... Um, what for? Uh, uh, but it was just a, it was a short piece I did called... A short film I did called Jacket Mask. I don't know if you heard it. No, I didn't. I well, I mean, it's only, it's only about 40 seconds long, if you'd like to see it. Yeah, let's put it on. So this is it. Was just, I, thought I thought I tried to take things a bit more seriously and just do something. <laughs> I that... feel like you're joking, but we'll see. Well, no, it's just it's sort of like the inconvenience of COVID, and you know we all had to think out the box. Yeah. And and find new a new way to live. Ah, uh, license premises for. Yeah, I need to stop. So, we want to go into a licensed premises for some green fried chicken and a beer. Yeah. So you've got no mask. Yeah, I went to go into a licensed premises for beer and fried chicken, but I forgot my mask. Jacket mask. Jacket mask. Jacket mask, jacket mask, walking backwards, jacket mask, beer and chicken, jacket mask, go for a fish, it's jacket mask, put jacket on backwards, here comes the jacket mask. Jacket mask, jacket mask, going for a fish, jacket mask, chicken, jacket mask. Want to be his jacket mask? He idea. forgot his mask, but he's you get the get the idea, bro. <laughs> I actually think that that was better than quite a lot of what was nominated at the BAFTA. It's just too clicky. The BAFTA's is too clicky to give too, it a shot. Too, too tribal, that you I don't. Like, I honestly, I honestly really uh, that brought me a lot of joy. It's uh, it's like all the people are complaining about the Sam Awards right now. So I'm going to mute you while I'm talking because there's a bit of an echo, but that kind of fixes it. Everybody moans about award ceremonies, like, and obviously as somebody who's wrote a song called Scottish Album of the Year, maybe I'm a hypocrite, but what I find is that see if you're not nominated, you feel it. You do feel like, am I just shout, shouting into the abyss? Is anyone listening? And you feel a wee bit, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, is this, oh, this is horrible feeling. Is it, is it jealousy? Is this jealousy? And then make, make a joke about it, because I think people take it too seriously. I I mean, I don't I don't know any of the chat about the Sama Awards, because I'm not in the music scene at all. I don't have oh, any... Oh, you're the host of the Sama Awards? They ask me to come every year, and I think that's great, because I don't have a clue who anyone is. So I'm not starstruck in any way. Um, my favourite band is still ABBA, and almost will be. But what I think about... Um, what I think about awards and stuff like that is you can't be making stuff to get the award you've got to be making stuff because you like making stuff you can't be making stuff because you want to make money from it you've got to be making stuff because you like making 
and then hopefully the other things come in place but actually like you get so bogged down on these it's just like one person's opinion like i've been on the panel for stuff before where i've been like these are all great i'm just going to pick the one that i like the most which doesn't actually mean it's not actually any sort of like authority in any way it's just somebody's opinion but it is really hard because these little things like they do give you like a kind of boost but the key is is that you can't take on the good feedback and you can't take on the bad feedback either because what happened with me was when I did daddy drag and I was getting all the good feedback and I was like letting myself get really like oh this is a good show whatever then I got a two-star review and it like actually crushed me because I was putting all my emphasis on what other people think when actually you just have to be like do I think what I do is good and needs to be in the world that's like all you should be asking yourself um and that's why I think I always like change art forms because I like I like to I like I like to be making and I like to be challenging myself and I like to be uncomfortable and I like to be learning stuff whereas I think sometimes people can get stuck in like oh this is what I do and actually they should be like okay well like experimenting and playing and not getting so like tied into what other people like or what other people expect of them um and I like I can understand people being disappointed for for not getting nominated for things especially if you've worked really hard like I've had like pretty bad rejections this year and you just need to take a few days and be like oh I'm a bit heartbroken about that and then you know try and move on but it is tricky I I don't think you should take the I mean do you feel do you feel rivalry when you're at the bathroom mm. I didn't. Oh, just, just for a split second, just for a split second, like a little bit. I mean, I seen, a, I, I think I seen a picture of you, like saying yeah. congratulations to the winner. And obviously, you were, yeah. you were, uh, there's a the place for them. I think there's a temptation. There's always a temptation to like buy into the competition, and there's a temptation to, if because when I didn't win, I noticed I had the temptation to be like, oh well, my film does this, and this is why. And and actually, you just have to go. Hold on, back off. What is really happening here? What has actually happened here? A very good film has won a BAFTA and you should be happy for them. They're your peers and they're saying something important and they've made something really beautiful. And you have to go, and that doesn't mean that I haven't done that either. Like I've done that too. It's just, you know, it's about, it's it's kind what of- like, be, that's, that's all very good, you get beat by someone who's good, but what if they were shite? I don't know. I, I kind of feel like you're always going to be tempted. You're always going to be tempted to be jealous and the thing is is to recognize that feeling and say okay well what is that feeling telling me jealousy is a really interesting one because jealousy always is pointing out the thing that you want in your life so for example my friend who like has now taken up running i get really jealous of her i'm like that fucking like i can't believe she's taking up running what a bitch like i don't want to be friends <laughs> with her anymore. But then I'm like, okay, well, the reason that I'm annoyed at her is because I want to do something that makes me feel good, that moves my body, that all this thing. So maybe rather than slagging her off, I should be doing something that feels good for me. And it's like, you know, that them winning that film for the BAFTA, Sean, who's also a poet who comes from the same background. Like I was, I was kind of like, you know, obviously there's a temptation for me to be like, oh, I can't believe they won. But actually I'm like, I'm really happy for Sean, like this is his journey and also he's made a very good film and if it was a really shite film, I'd be like, isn't that amazing that he still managed to win? <laughs> you know, th like these things, these things, and you can't, like I'm not perfect at it, like there's still things that I won and like when I don't get them, like the Edwin Morgan, um, the Edwin Morgan one this year was really tough for me because it was the last year I could apply. It was something that I really wanted to be recognised in page poetry. A lot of my peers got it, got shortlisted, won it. And I was like, I had still not got the nod. And I was literally like devastated. Like I like I felt so stupid. And then I just had to take the time to feel like that and then be like, you know, send them a message and be like, I'm so happy. I hope you win it. And like that, and that's, you do need that time to say, I am gutted here. I'm disappointed. But then it's about not letting that then fuel like jealousy or fuel hatred. It's about going, it's valid that I feel that way, but then what do I want to do? Well, I want to get better at writing poetry. So I'm going to get better at writing poetry. So I think that, that that's that's the key. And and that's something I've kind of learned recently because I did I know um I know Joe's done the um 
artist's way as well, but that's something that the artist's way talks about a lot, is about jealousy and envy and comparison. And and it's it's a, definitely a work in progress, for sure. But if you haven't done the artist's way, it's one of the best things I've ever done, for sure, to like, what, think about my practice. The what, sorry? Called The Artist's Way. Okay. It's like a workbook about rediscovering creativity. So, like, every week you have, like, different tasks about how to, like, talk about your creative practice and stuff and, like, look at your life and how creativity can be part of your life more. And it, it, it is actually amazing. I did it earlier this year. You have to write three pages every morning. And, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting thing and it's made me feel much more much yeah. more sure about why I'm doing what I'm doing, I think. Aura says, love this mindfulness and awareness of self. Mm. Correct. Correct. I'm I'm thinking about doing that as well because I, I do work so that I've got to, so that I can do the art that I want to do. But I'm just doing too much work and then as a result, you know, you just you just, you just just spend the money on things to, for convenience so that you've got more time to work. So I'm going to, I want to try and do less work and more art because I think I've got everything wrong, wrong way around for it just now. Yeah. I've got, should we do a, should you do a live poem or should we do a play a video? I do a live one. Yeah, an exclusive. An exclusive. What do Let's you talk want? about the book. So um, I don't really know much about the book. I'm, I'm assuming it's, this is your first poetry book, so this is just like your greatest hits plus some new ones. Mm, I, a lot. It's not my greatest hits. I cut a lot out, like a lot. Why you cut out the good one? Why would you cut out your your hits? Or oh, is it because you don't like the hits? Or no, it's because they don't really look good on the page. So most of these are written for the book rather than for performance. Um, I don't even know what poem to do. Like, what what vibe do you want? Do you want a funny vibe, a dark vibe? Uh... Why don't we have one funny and one dark? And we'll talk in one between. One funny and one dark. Okay. So maybe start. Maybe end with a, maybe end with a funny one. Start with a dark one. Well, then we'll have a wee chat. Plug the book. And then you can close it with. Cause I'm not, I know I'm aware, aware you need to jet off to Dallas Houston. It's fu it's funny, like when you, I shouldn't have said you're a funny one because now it's got to be funny. But we'll go for this one. This is actually a, a be, well. What well, well, doesn't it be funny? Just maybe this ending that not be. Here, do you want a totally exclusive one that I've never yes, read? I've got an exclusive banner. Exclusive. There we go. Okay, so this is brand new, brand brand new. I've never read it out loud, but we'll go for it. Okay, I should probably sit up rather than slouching down. It's called Kissing in Public, um, and it's about kissing a girl in public. We winch like old Hollywood starlets, and the restaurant patrons try not to watch us, but they can't help it, and I can't blame them. This is an unmissable kiss. I'm not sure where you start and I stop. We are endless. It's like I have just chased you through an airport and have convinced you to stay, or like there has been a zombie infection in our city and the cure is lodged somewhere in your throat and I must dislodge it before the hour is out. We're making face love in this red velvet booth. Customers peek over sticky menus. The waiter pretends to polish cutlery. We ignore them in this script. It's just you and me, baby. We kiss like there has been a nuclear explosion and we both survive the initial blast but the only clean air left is in our lungs and we must kiss until the dust settles and the radiation is gone. I kiss you like I am a cowboy in the wild, wild west and you are my faithful, faithful horse. The only one who understands my quiet disposition, why I wear my trousers so high, my manly frustrations. I kiss you like I have just dragged you from the ocean and you need mouth to mouth and I insist in performing CPR even though I've never done it before, even though it means I am missing out on winning the ultimate universe surf championships that I've trained my whole damn life for, but I don't need a stupid trophy. You're the only girl for me. With no subtlety at all, the whole restaurant are gawking, flabbergasted at us. We are flaming meteorites blasting towards Earth. The chef has put down his tools, a white wine mother tuts, an old man has placed a strategic cushion on his lap, ignoring their meals, they feast on us. They're acting like they've paid good money to see this kiss. And I kiss you harder, not because I want them to watch, because the plot says we'll kiss whether they do or not. Let our kisses have kisses. Your tongue is my dinner and the night is young. Give them popcorn and let them watch. Let them all watch. Exclusive. Exclusive. Fantastic. You know, I've got these new applause buttons, but 
You've probably, it's been a while since you've been on the show, but you probably noticed that things have got worse, but it's because everything's moving to a new studio, so I'm kind of like, I'm actually going back the way to go forward, if you know what I mean. So there is a pause button somewhere. Hey, Let's go on. one. Who are you? That one still exists. What show are you on now? Like, how many shows have you done? Oh, I don't know. I've not, I've lost count. I think we'll do a 500 special, but I mean, I think we're at... I mean, what do you count them all? I mean, some of them are not worth counting. <laughs> and then some of them were like of 12, some of them were like twelve hours long. They get deleted immediately after. Twelve like, hours long. Yeah, we did a twelve-hour <laughs> long one on my birthday. Well, like, that was in the middle of lockdown. And, uh, yeah, it was good. Well, I mean, I've never—I don't know if it was good. I, I enjoyed it, but then I, I took it off the internet the next day when I woke up with a really bad hangover, and I was like, "Why?" <laughs> You know, I was drunk on the internet. It's not a good idea. You just... No. It's, it's just, act. You've been talking about the fear. You talk about waking up with the fear. That is that is the real fear because at least when you're at a, a venue or a gig, you kind of know who was in the room. But drunk internet... Phew. Yeah, no, I'm not into that. I think that's why loads of kids don't drink now is because they've just got, like... Because everything can be filmed. Like, I'm so glad I grew up without... Like, with really pixelated camera phones so and nothing just got uploaded it and they really did it yeah mm. i think i'm glad i missed that as well mm. but yeah i i, I think yeah we've got sorry hold on we've got uh, wow love that poem my perception was it's like a twin flame kiss taking me through your past lives wow that's cool and uh, as for the the book itself i'm going to bring up the, the bring it up on the screen just now it's, so it's not the greatest hits, it's, because like you said, let's just talk a little bit about that actually, because I find that interesting, because I'm still in the middle of trying to do a, do a poetry book, or a, a, a lyric book sort of thing, and I'm, I'm not sure whether to do it all poetry, do a jackal trades lyrics, just like do an albums, just like do my albums that way, but so, like you said, some of them just don't really convert to page, so what is the process like, how do you, what makes it convert to the page? Well, I think for this, for me, it was like the page is the start point um, rather than the like the second bit. It was like, OK, well, what, you know, let me look at these poems on the page and do they do they look good? Can I make them look good? Like, how can I group them so they make sense? And I was like really playful with that. Like I there's some poems that they're all quite a lot of them are structured very differently. Um, and that was really fun. Um and but yeah it was hard like there was some poems that I had to get rid of that I felt really sad about um that just didn't feel like they worked in the book um and then you get scared you're like oh well do they not matter now are they like gone to the wind but like you just have to trust that they will come back in life in another way but um yeah most of them uh, were written specifically for the page and then some of the older ones I, they looked quite good so I was like great I can use that but I really wanted to like make sure all the poems kind of went in with the theme. So the theme of like, um, I was, the whole book's about being like public life being private and private life being public and how the poem can act as a gate between an uh, inner and an outer life. And you know, my practice for the last 10 years has been writing about my personal life. And I was just interested in, that always felt like a really tricky thing for me because people always felt like they knew you or they always felt like the the poem was the absolute truth. Whereas a poem is like really edited in a way. And it's it's I in the book I've got a poem about how a poem is essentially a classy version of a social media post. Like you still edit it for it to be viewed in a certain way. Um and yeah, so rather than thinking about um like one of the one of the big things that I had to think about was does it go in the theme? Does it make sense in the theme? Um, and that was that was another thing I thought about. So I think if you were doing like a greatest hits, you could put in whatever you wanted. But for me, it was really important that all of the things kind of matched with the title of the book and there was like a journey through it. So that was kind of my thinking. Well, you've always been very good about, well, I don't know, obviously, like you said, is it true? Is it just a, a story? But it always feels like when you're performing that you're bringing yourself and you're putting your, your heart on stage for all to see. Is there, is there any lines that you would cross? So, cause I, cause I know that I always love like, um, in hip hop as well, somebody that just actually tells a story, whether it's true or not, but it, it, it feels like you've, you've got something. But I, I, I vaguely remember you talking before about 
it, it, it felt like it was a point in the Scottish poetry scene anywhere where it was almost like people were trying to outdo each other with tales of trauma. And is and it's not maybe not always a healthy thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's something I have to be really careful with when I'm teaching as well, because there is, I think because of all the American and YouTube poets and stuff, there is this tendency for people to go, okay, well, what's the most serious thing I can talk about? What's the trauma that I can mine? And I think that that's something I had to really interrogate within this book is was like, okay, well, what do I feel comfortable talking about? What and what? There's poems that never made it because they were too personal. There's also poems in it that have changed and are not n no longer true because I wanted to make sure that they were like not exposing. So, and also I've got like a kind of fictional story in it as well. So I think I'm definitely figuring out those boundaries. Like I don't get it right every time, but I'm always gonna be Layla on stage. Like I find it very hard to write about other people because other people are like so hard to write about <laughs> because I feel like I never get it quite right. Whereas with myself, I feel like I am the expert in my own experience. But yeah, there's still moments where I'm like, oh, this feels, you know, this feels like I can have it in the book, but maybe I can't perform it. Or it maybe feels like, oh, this is something that I've not actually dealt with yet. And therefore, I don't think I should put it in the book. Like the things that are really serious and really like kind of like the grimmer pieces in the, in the book, they're all things that happened like years ago that I've kind of processed. But there's stuff that I probably am writing now that wouldn't be ready to be out in the world yet because I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting thing and I and I don't really encourage other people to, to, to write in the same way that I do. You know, I encourage them to do whatever feels right for them because I would never, I maybe in the past have pushed people within my teaching to be like, you should write something personal, you should write something autobiographical. And now I'm kind of like, you want to write fiction? You go for it. You want to write fantasy fiction? Go for it. You want to write, you know, whatever is right for that person, that's what they should be writing rather than going straight to the personal. Um, but it's, yeah, it's something I've always, it's always came hand in hand with my writing. And I think that's the same with you, Mark. Like, uh, you can't detach your personality from your writing. Whereas sometimes I meet people and I'm like, your writing is so different from who you are as a person. Like I can't see the comparison. But for me, I cannot detach that. I am so part of everything that I write. Um, and I think you're the same, really. In public, in private, the the UK tour rolls into Gala Shields tonight. I know there is. We do have Gala Shields people in here. We love Mac Arts on this show. So go to Mac Arts tonight. And um, Asha B, support? Yeah, B Asha. Sorry, B Asha. <laughs> it's the alphabetical order is something does it. <laughs> Can you only speak in alphabetical order? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know that about me? I only ever speak in alphabetical order. <laughs> um, but Saturday, most Glasgow, it's uh, King Touch with yeah. uh, Ellen Renton, Kevin Peagle Day, Iona Lee, and Impress, Nick A. Rush, and Colin Bramwell. And uh, yeah, if you've got to that, We've also got the rival gig at, at Classic Grand if you want some scans, some gyro babies, but hopefully we, we can um, not fall out and we can all meet at the Classic Grand uh, yeah, for yeah. A, an after party, 11 till 3. That's Free nice. entry if you go to either of those gigs. Um, and uh, yeah, the book, uh, how do people get the book if they oh, can't go to the gig? www.laylajosephine.co.uk forward slash shop. Um, but if you're at the gig on Saturday, there'll be books there and I'll be signing uh, books and I'm also I'm maybe going to do like a Black Friday sale just to be a capitalist about it potentially tomorrow. Yeah, I think we should do it. Everyone sh seems to do it, doesn't they? Yeah, I think I'll do like three for two. When did Black Friday become Black Friday and not like the Friday before Christmas? It's not the Friday before Christmas. All oh, right, yeah, of course it's not. It's <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, like uh, when Black Friday used to be the Friday before Christmas, the Friday like. It was what all office parties are. You're right because it used because when I used to PR in Glasgow, Black Friday was the Friday before Christmas because it would be like you'd be out working trying to get everyone in to come to the club. And it was also the busiest day, the busiest drinking day of the year in, in yeah, most but cities you're in right. the UK. The Americans took it for shot. The Americans took it from us, and now all you think of is Amazon and saving twenty percent. And you know, I'm actually. Buying Goodbye. real Christmas gifts for myself, really, for the studio, for us all to enjoy 
the show on a on a more high budget level, but also looking at it and it and I ju- it just you, you're just saying, is this a special offer? You just got to take the capitalist's worth for it that it is twenty percent cheaper than it would normally be. I know, I know, and it's so it's so. There's something about the marketing of it that's really like really frantic. Like I was like buying a couple of things last night that I needed, and I was like, oh, that it'll be cheaper, and it was. It was like thirty percent off. So I was like buying quite a lot of it, and then I was like feeling really manic and I was like it's not like I'm in a shop like it's fine I'm like at home like shopping online but there's something about it it's like oh I need to get it now or I'll run out which is get it now because it'll be even cheaper than the January sales oh uh, do you think I don't know I hope not but like is that not the thing about Tesco now is that you have to have a club card to get it at its actual price or like yeah. everything is more expensive yeah I got um because not only the, the, the light cut number but also like a hot button tablet and uh <laughs> The heartburn tablets were in Tesco and Dundee the other week. It was eight, seven pounds with a club card or twelve pounds without a club card. And luckily, Martin Windybank was with me and he had a club card, so it was all, all good. It was fine in the end. But that's getting a wee bit weird. That I suppose they can charge what they want. And a meal and a meal deal now is like just the price of the normal three things. <laughs> it's not really. Whams are sixty one pence as well. What whams are? Whams bars are sixty one pence. God. Which, according oh. to the Financial Times, is two Freddos these days. So it's really things are getting bad out there for the confectionery. Yeah. Everyone's talking about energy bills. They're not talking about the the cheap confectionery that once was cheap. I know. And do you know but, what? I miss it. I miss the cheap sweets. Um, but yeah, have I you time for one more poem before you go to Gala Shields. I've got time. Do you want to have this one's called uh, Questions I Have for Birds? And it's about, I wrote it in Presswick, so I've been here for five years now. And I, when I first came here, I noticed that there was lots of men hanging outside my house, like, all the time. And I was like, oh, I wonder why there's all these old men outside. And then I quickly realised that they were, like, plane watchers. Um, and I have got a new hobby of being a plane watcher watcher. So they keep an eye on the planes and I keep an eye on them. But also, they also watch the birds and they feed the birds. We've got loads of um birds here i think it's because there's because i live by the airport and the sea there's like loads of space there's like no high buildings um and yeah i noticed that they were flying a lot more on the windy days um and i thought that was really interesting and i wanted to ask them why that was and this is called questions i have for birds where do you go at night How do you hear without any ears? Does it hurt when you lose a feather? Are you friends with one another? You know the worms that you strangle out of the air like screaming red newborns. Do you chew them or swallow them whole? I've never seen a glint of a tooth so I imagine that's how it works. Is it like swallowing a piece of spaghetti? Is it like sucking your tongue to the spine? Could you confirm? Can you feel them squirm in your belly like eels until the acid melts into mush? I see you on windy days, flying harder and for longer. Is there more joy in that kind of weather? Gusty and unpredictable, does it make you feel invincible? I see how you dip and glide, a moment of clarity, a break from the monotony of a daily bird routine. What does that feel like? If you had time to explain, I'd love to know. Is it like a child slapping their palms down on the ocean top? A pair of lesbians kissing hard on the street, how a violin string feels when it's plucked? Does it make you vibrate? An old man shouting checkmate in a park with a board on a bench, pardon the pun, but is it like a duck to water? Is it like coming up on the dance floor, the first taste of tea off a mother's pinky? What is the human version of flying when it's windy? Do you get lost in it? Does it feel like your purpose, birds? Tell me what I can do. I want that moment always on the wind, on the surf, on the nose, on the breeze, the clarity, the coming together. That's what life is for, maybe. Sorry, I brought it back to myself again. So selfish of me. Now do say, how do you stand on such small feet? Do you have a favourite seat? How do you know what song to sing? Are you still here? I'm still here. I'm still here. That was amazing. Shouts to the plane watchers. It seems like a wholesome, relaxing pastime. Yeah. I mean, like, I can't actually see the planes because my garage is in the way. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, background music. That's the new extreme. That's good. Yeah, I can see right now. But we yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. The raspberry bushes are dead, but the roses are still growing. The sky is wide and open, and every time I look at it, it changes. And the plain waters are setting in the ocean, feeding the birds, morning food, watching the village plain from here, fly over at There you go. A poem for you. Leila Josephine live at King Touch this Saturday. Johnny Cyphers just commented he's going to it. Yeah, so he's coming to both because he's both. actually legend. It can be done. I went to I went to four gigs, well three gigs, stereo bars and room two to see Stan wow. Benefit, Straight Girl, and Declan Welsh in the Decadent West. Wow! How did Declan get on at the barrel? Oh, amazing! Oh, amazing! Okay. Smashed it. Sold it. Place was buzzing. Amazing. So was, and I think uh, Josephine Sellers was playing keys as well, so it was good. It was I oh got I, I was backstage. I was I think I did interview them, but I was I had a few drinks in me, but um, we'll, we'll hopefully get that interview out soon. But yeah, really pleased to see Declan doing that. Yeah, and, I'm so happy for him. He's doing so well. He's such a nice guy as well. Hundred percent. And it was just it was it was lucky. I just got the timing right, and I managed to see everything. But so I tried that the week before and it didn't work. So Johnny's gonna do that. So Johnny, let us know you get on because it's um we're on it we're on at seven forty five eight o'clock. I, I know that. Um, but you could if you can't catch us, then just come after the Leila's gig. Um, that was amazing. It says Aura was caught up in it. Thank you very much, Aura, for tuning in. And uh, yeah, tonight we're back. We're back tonight for an interview with the Deadline Shakes. Who have an album out tomorrow? Where are they? I've got a picture of them. These guys, art rock, power pop, funky, uh, four piece. Who are, who are, I remember the back years ago used to be signed to Flowers in the Dustbin. So they're they're going to be on the show live tonight at seven, and then tomorrow night we're going to have a build up to the big one where we're going to speak to Gyro Babies, Big Fab Panda, and Esperanza about the big one on Saturday, and. Of course, you are both and everyone's everyone's invited to the after party at the Classic Grand. Go and buy your book from Leila Josephine at leilajosephine.com forward slash shop. Buy it tomorrow and you'll get a Black Friday discount. Yeah, I'm going to do... Uh, what do you think? Three for two? Three for two is a good way to do it. You get rid of them. It's a good, it's a, it's a perfect, would you call it, a, I would say it's a perfect Christmas gift, would you not say? I would say it would be perfect for any of your, like, uh, female cousins or, like, younger nieces. What do you or get them, like, what do you get them? Yeah, That's what you're probably I, thinking. Do you know what, this fits in a stocking. It's only a five, so it goes in a stocking. And it's kind of red, which is, like, a Christmas colour, and also it'll make you seem, like, indie and cultured, and also it's, um... It's not that expensive either. It's ten pounds, and you'd spend ten pounds on like a shite candle and a packet of Terry's chocolate. And, and if you pay an extra pound, then I believe Leila will put on a twenty pound price tag on it that you can accidentally leave it on, and you go, "How embarrassing!" It was a twenty five pound <laughs> price tag. And if you want it signed as well, I can sign them. So. Amazing. Good luck with the gig on Saturday. I don't think I'll make it, but um, uh, well, actually, what was going to say we've got this poet slam poetry. We've not done it or poet of the year yet. So we're hopefully going to do that and have the final on or in our Edinburgh studio. But on also, the 11th. that was so long, Mark. I've never had a job that lasted that long. <laughs> I think it was like over three. I think I, I must have given you about fifteen hours of my life doing that. I know, no, it's, we've shortened it. Down. We, do it we did it last to. year. What you we do is we do it one semi final, eight poems, eight poets in the semi, and then we do four poets in the final. We were, we were finding our feet. We, we did. It was a bit long. I mean, I think there were three semi-finals or four semi-finals. I, I couldn't make one because I was really sick for one of them, but I definitely did two others. And I think there was like, I think there must have been about 20 poem, poets in each round. Like you had we like were, 60 people. People were just chatting. They, they didn't have anyone else to talk to, so we were just having like lots of chats in between. I know, but also like that—that that, that was tight. Like by the end of it, I had no idea. I couldn't even remember half of them. Well, we're going to be doing it again. Great! And, uh, Sign uh, me up. Sign me up. So, but well, you don't need to be a judge 
But if you want to play the final I on the eleventh, because we've actually got, well, you can compete. you can compete if you want. I'm basically we're going to work out the dates this week. But I think the plan is is we're going to do the fourth of December. We get eight poets to just do it online like like last time, and yeah. then the eleventh. Then the eleventh, we're going to have multi camera live streaming studio. And we're going to be able, everyone can bring a friend or whatever. So it'll be a small crowd. That'll be fun. Bring your own bottle, like, idea of maybe, like, 30 people or something like that. So we're, the final's in the 11th. So I, it's just a case of I need to find eight poets. So if you're watching this and you're a poet and you want to do it, in fact, Johnny Cypher, you were posting the other day, but you want to do stuff, you need to be available online on the 4th of December and you need to be able to get to um, Edinburgh. Well, it's outside Edinburgh. It's easy to get to. It's near the airport on the 11th. And uh, we'll do it at 5 o'clock. To seven. Why did they get in Edinburgh? Well, it's just the, the Glasgow studio's not ready yet. It'd be too risky. I don't want to. I want to fail in my own terms, like doing shows from the new studio when it's just me and maybe a friend. I don't right. want people coming down and putting their heart on the stage and telling their the the life story with passion and practicing for it, and then it doesn't go out live and it's not recorded and it's a disaster. So. <laughs> The place in Edinburgh is um, Club Anywhere. It's where we do our Club Anywhere and live uh, DJ shows from every Wednesday. They're, they've Hamish has got it working great. Live street it sounds great. It looks great. So we're going to do it there. I could do it in a venue as well, but this is another thing. I've got this mobile camera equipment and di mixing desks, but and then I'm relying on someone's Wi-Fi. I don't want to try it out on these new ports or or old ports. No age restrictions. Let me know if you want to do it. 4th of December and then the 11th of December. Sounds and fun. I mean, that's how I started slamming. Have, yeah. you, have you retired from slamming? Did you? I don't get asked. I don't get asked to compete anymore. I just get asked to judge. Is that, is that I think it's probably good. I think it's probably good because I had, I had my moment. You know, it's good for other people to get theirs, you know. And I've, oh yeah, I did win a slam. I did. You, you beat me on a slam. I beat, I beat, I did. By doing a poem called I, I never won a slam, but that was kind of cheating. No, but you had the uh, the muscle bra accent as a muscle relaxer. Relaxing, yeah. The best rhyme yeah, of that was in the final, but see, it was once again it was rigged. It was working class versus middle class. Everyone wanted our team to win, so I did it with a one line poem. It was a lot of shape. But you still won it. So. I still won. I did win a slam. You and you beat you beat a UK champion slammer. So. That's, that's right. Oh. I should feel good about that, but I'm actually a wee bit sad that that poem had some. I had, I had that, that was the first time I ever tried. It. I kind of wrote it that day. I've never won a slam, and I thought this is a good idea. And then I could have really developed that, but now it just. I, really, I I think that that yeah, you could you could still develop it. You should develop it so you can perform it at the. At the I've never won a BAFTA. I've never won a BAFTA. I've never won a BAFTA. But um, no, I say you should perform it at your slam and on the fourth and the eleventh. That's true. I could do that. And if you want to do this, join the slam. You can. You can do it if you Me? want. To. Yeah, you want to perform. No. Nah. Nah. All right. Well, if you, you want, you can perform. Will... You can perform a set at the end or or before it if you want to do a set. It'll be. It'll, it'll, it's going to look good. It'll be recorded well. So if you're you're on form doing your UK tour, if you're available, have a think about it. I've put you in the spot anyway. Have a think about it and let me know. But um, and have got have a good good fun uh, Gala Shields tonight. If you've got a Gala Shields, go there. Great to speak to you. And Hi, Mark. Good Great luck for the rest of the tour. Thanks, pal. Thanks. Everyone for else, I'll see you tonight at seven o'clock. We've got the deadline shakes. Bye. Bye. Do you want weirdo or do you want it? Okay. What?